right, we are back. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Weekly MMA Talk. This is a big one. We have the weekend of UFC 200. Holy crap, this is going to be an amazing weekend. Right off the bat, though, boom. Look at that. We are upgrading for UFC 200. We have multi-camera angles. Boom. 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 Look at that. Things are getting too high tech. This might be out of control. You guys will see in some interviews we have both cameras running and in other interviews we only have the single camera. That's because I just recently updated it. We have three interviews this week. We got Bilal Muhammad. He is going to be the final interview on the show. He fights Alan Joban at, what is it, the Fight Night event on Thursday. We got three events, so... I'm just trying to get my mind wrapped around everything. Such a crazy weekend. But we have him. He'll be coming on later in the show. Then we got Rafael Sunsau, who's fighting TJ Dillashaw. That is an amazing fight, and it's getting buried by all of these fights. He's on the show. He talks about his fight against TJ Dillashaw, the fact that he's been gone for two years. It's a really interesting interview. Make sure to check that out. Also, to start off the show, we have from MMAfighting.com. Danny Seguera, Seguera, Seguro, something like that. He he pronounces it better than I do. We have him early in the show, actually coming up right now. Let's get right into the show. We talk about UFC 200, break down the main card. Here it is. All right, today we have a special guest here to talk about UFC 200. It is from MMAfighting.com, Danny Seguera. Did I pronounce that right? Seguera? Segura, but you're Segura. close. Segura. All right, I'm not even going to try the That's action. better than, than 99% of the people that give it a shot. Thanks. So we're here to talk about UFC 200. Obviously, a giant weekend. There's just so many good fights. We're going to start off with the headliner, John Jones against Daniel Cormier 2 to decide who the real light heavyweight champion is. This is a fight that I think had a lot of momentum, but it seems to have slowed down, is maybe overshadowed by Brock Lesnar against Mark Hunt. Are you excited for this fight? I think there's a lot at stake. I would agree with you. It slowed down. Um, you know, with, with John Jones being out for so long, and, and, you know, the original matchup for this card was Conor McGregor, right, versus... Uh, Nate Diaz, that was supposed to headline UFC 200. Uh, so then when you replace Cormier with Jones, I feel like some people feel like they're getting a little less just because that fight was so big. Uh, but, I mean, it's still a very important fight. These could very well be, like, the top two guys in the world. Uh, so I am excited to see it, and I think it should be a good fight. Yeah, that's something that your pal uh, over at MMA Fighting, Ara Hawani, says, that this yeah. is basically number one pound for pound against number two. Do you agree with that, that if Daniel Cormier does beat John Jones, he would become the pound for pound best fighter in the world i think so i think if you beat number one you become number one and, and i have john jones ranked as pound for pound fighter of uh currently so uh i, I think yeah if if Cormier gets past uh jones especially if he if you know he puts on a, a good performance and wins decisively i think there's no doubt that he is uh you know the best in the world look what it, at what he's done at heavyweight he could have easily maybe been a, a, a ufc heavyweight champion now dropping down to light heavyweight um you know, he is the champion now, and, you know, we'll see if he's still the champion after UFC 200. But I do think if he beats John Jones, he'll become the best fighter in the world. Mm -hmm. And I would agree with you. But the thing is that I don't really see a way for Daniel Cormier to beat John Jones. Their first fight, even though it was close in some aspects, I think John Jones dominated most of the fight. How do you see Daniel Cormier being able to change from the first fight? I don't. I, I, I see this fight going for John Jones, but I mean, we've seen crazier things happen. You know, of anything course. can happen. You can get caught. Uh, you know, Cormier has heavy hands. You know, he's fought at heavyweight, as they mentioned that. Um, so I, I do think Cormier stands a chance, just like anybody has a puncher's chance, right? Uh, obviously, he has a little more because he's actually a, a pretty skilled fighter. Um, but, you know, John Jones is is, is John Jones, and, and the way that first fight went, uh, I mean... I think John Jones should win this. I mean, if you also look at like the wrestling aspect, Cormier is supposed to be better at that, but yet John Jones was able to get some takedowns and and and, and win in that aspect uh, in their first fight. Uh, but something I want to point out true, that um, something I want to point out is John Jones' first fight in, in his return against OSP. Uh, yeah, what did you think of that great. performance? Because 
you know, Luke Thomas was saying, uh, you know, you could make the argument that John Jones didn't look too good. And, you know, if, you know, the good old saying, you're only as good as your last fight, uh, you know, if you judge that performance, uh, I definitely would give a, a, a really good chance to Daniel Cormier. Mm-hmm. Well, it's pretty funny because everybody was saying, oh, John Jones looks like a beast. And then he's saying that for this camp, he's not doing any weightlifting, that that completely screwed him up for that fight. But mm-hmm. I'm not sure if that's... I'm not counting it as an excuse, but I don't think that's the full reason. I think there was a lot of ring rust, also a lot of doubt. He had a lot to lose having the people before him, Conor McGregor, Ronda Rousey being upset. I think mentally, John Jones might be a little bit shaken due to all the big champions losing and the fact that is this is a return fight for him. Yeah. OSP was kind of a challenge, but Daniel Cormier is in a whole nother league. Definitely. I would agree, yeah. Mm-hmm. Daniel Cormier has proven uh, from time to time that he is, you know, the second, uh, in my opinion, best light heavyweight out there, um, you know, definitely on top of OSP. So, and I do think Daniel Cormier uh, would probably be more of a challenging fight than, than OSP. Mm-hmm. And we go from talking about the number one, number two pound for pound fighters to two guys who are kind of okay in the heavyweight division right now but are still one of the top build fights mark hunt against brock lesnar this is a fight that makes really no sense ranking wise but when it comes to just fun wise i can't wait for this fight this is my most anticipated fight there are so many variables and no matter what happens it's going to be fun what do you think about this fight I agree. I think it's a fun fight. Uh, it's a fan. It's a fan friendly fight. Obviously, yeah. with Brock, Brock Lesnar, any fight with Brock Lesnar is a is a, a fan favorite fight. You know, fan friendly fight. Um, I don't really like the matchup. I would have seen. I would have liked to seen uh, Brock Lesnar return against somebody else. When these two guys were matched up, I was like, "What? Really? Like, yeah." I didn't really see that fight. You know, I don't know. There's just some some type of matchups that don't really go. Uh, don't really flow in in, in my mind. Uh, and this was it. Um, I still don't know how it's going to go down because it's such a weird matchup. Uh, yeah. I mean, we, we rarely see Mark Hunt get taken down because he's such a stocky guy and has such a strong base. But then, you know, you got Brock Lesnar, who's an amazing wrestler. So, yeah. you know, it's definitely intriguing. And uh, I really don't can't really picture how that fight is going to play out until it actually happens. Really, the only way I can see it playing out is Brock Lesnar bull rushing Hunt, either getting him down and finishing him or not getting him down and getting knocked out. And that's why I'm really curious as to why Lesnar picked Hunt for an opponent, because everybody likes to say that Brock Lesnar doesn't like getting hit. That's the big thing about him. And when he got hit against Cain Velasquez, he went spiraling out of control and down. Mark Hunt is the heaviest hitter in the heavyweight division. Why would he pick Mark Hunt as an opponent? That is a good question. A lot of people think it's just, you know, this makes people believe that this is a a one-time deal, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, If you were trying to make a title run or make, you know, have a long career in the UFC, you would think they would have built them up, say match them up with, uh, you know, a Bigfoot Silva or somebody, uh, you know, someone, uh, an easier challenge than uh, Mark Hunt. So, you know, it makes you wonder. Um, It can also make you wonder on the confidence level of Brock Lesnar. You know, this is a guy who has been sick, who's, it's been proven, you know, Uh, he had issues uh, throughout his career um, and he was never really 100% and he believes he's 100% now. Uh, So, I mean, maybe we even see uh, the best heavyweight heavyweight of all time, you know, with Brock Lesnar. Who knows? Uh, We we really don't know what to expect here. Uh, but my my take on it, I would think uh, Mark Hunt has a heavy base. If you see guys mm-hmm. trying to take him down, I mean, his legs are massive. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he has a strong base. And I, I don't really – I never really saw Brock Lesnar as a as a single or double leg takedown guy. He just sort of bull rushes you and, and, and mm-hmm. takes you down. And be trying to change levels and get underneath Mark Hunt's punches, it's going to be tough too because Mark Hunt's a small guy. You know, he's not fighting any anyone taller or lanky, say, like Stefan Struve. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously I'm going to, I'm going to be looking into Mark Hunt trying to land that uppercut, you know, trying to catch, uh, Brock Lesnar coming in. I think this is going to be a fight where Mark Hunt should have the upper agent, should have, should have the upper hand and should do very well against, uh, Brock Lesnar. I don't, I can see Brock Lesnar getting a takedown, but you know, Mark Hunt just needs that one punch. And as you said, uh, Brock Lesnar doesn't like getting hit. And I know his excuse is nobody likes to get hit. But then you guys got, you have guys like Diego Sanchez or, or even McDonald's. Ricardo Lamas who, you know, invites people to, you know, fight or, or Max Holloway or can take punches very well. Uh, Mark Hunt, I mean, 
Brock Lesnar sort of shows up when he gets hit. We've seen that in his fights. Uh, and I think it'll be the same case when he faces uh, Mark Hunt. Yeah, no matter what, though, I can't see this being a boring fight. This is just going to be a slug him out fight. And then we have below that fight, which I'm surprised that they put this fight ahead of two other title fights. We have for the interim title, Frankie Edgar against Jose Aldo, the sure. rematch. What do you think about that fight? I think, honestly, I'm not too interested in it. Uh, this is a rematch. Rematches don't really don't really excite me. I don't think they really excite the fans unless it's a controversial finish uh, or unless there's like some sort of beef there, like the Conor McGregor and Nate Diaz you know, rematch. You know, there's that sort of beef there. But Jose Aldo and Frankie Edgar never had beef. They've yeah. been very respectful, and they fought a fight that uh, was fairly dominated by Jose Aldo. There was no controversy there. At least I don't think, you know, uh, there was any. Uh, I'd like to believe Jose Aldo won that fight decisively. Um, so yeah, it's not really a fight that excites me too much. I think the big storyline heading in though is the fact that this is Jose Aldo's first fight after getting knocked out by McGregor and this is That's also true. Edgar's time to get a title at featherweight and he's just been murdering people. So you have this guy who's on a huge streak of phenomenal wins against a guy who was just knocked out, defeated for the first time. And I think it was 13 years for a very long time. That's true. Um, but you can also make the argument that, you know, styles make fights. Um, mm. Jose Aldo is a very, very good uh, defensive wrestler. I mean, we yeah. saw Chad Mendes. Chad Mendes is a phenomenal wrestler. Look how many times he took down Conor McGregor in, you know, without any training camp, what, with like a week's notice. And did he have the same success against Jose Aldo? He didn't. He had to stand and bang with him. Uh, Frankie Edgar is also not known to be as a, a heavy hitter, say like Conor McGregor. I don't think he, I mean, it's possible, right? I mean, he did it against Mendes, but he's not known to be like a knockout guy, a guy that, you know, does a lot of knockouts his most decisions he'll grind you out he'll out wrestle you he'll out strike you he'll outwork you that's that's his thing um but this is just a bad matchup for frankie frankie needs to get this fight to the ground and i don't see him getting it to the ground and then if it's in the striking department again as i said frankie i don't see him knocking out jose aldo and jose aldo's got amazing muay thai um but you know there's also that mystery factor of how aldo's gonna look coming back from that knockout we've seen guys uh, one knockout and their whole career changes. We've mm -hmm. seen that uh, plenty of times. I think uh, most recently, Edgar when he knocked out Gray Maynard. Gray Maynard, Perfect and he's example. fighting in the same card. Yeah, and then it took a di his career went a different path. Uh, another guy that comes up to my mind is Hennem Barrow. After yeah. that first TJ Dillashaw fight, with which he took a beating, he hasn't been been the same. And uh, you know his career has gone a, a different direction. You don't really see uh, anyone talking about Hennem Barrow, and he's not even in title contentions. And not too long ago, he was uh, the champion. Yeah, and you were talking about how you think that it's probably going to go to a decision. I just thought, we have a lot of fights, a lot of title fights, that might end up going five rounds. This card could be a very long card. John Jones versus Daniel Cormier, probably going to a decision. We have Frankie Edgar against Jose Aldo, probably going to a decision. We have Amanda Nunes against Misha Tate, probably going to go to a decision. How's this card going to really work having three five-round fights all going to a decision. Yeah, this very well. This could very well be a long night. But I mean, these are high-profile fights. These are fighters that have a lot of name, you know, behind them, a lot of momentum behind them. So I think I don't think time people will complain too much about time, just because they are big fights and and, and, and you know they are exciting matchups. Um, I would disagree with you on the Tate Nunez fight. Okay. Um, I think, uh, you know, giving my prediction, Amanda Nunez is a great fighter. I think she, she deserves the title shot. She's an amazing striker, but she has an issue that I've seen in her fights, and she tends to fade away past the first round. Okay. Uh, and we've seen that before in, in, in her fights. Uh, Misha Tate's very durable. She's proven that. Yeah. Uh, very patient fighter, too. Um, so I can see Misha Tate, you know, finishing this fight on the ground. It's very possible. Round two, round three, you know, dragging the fight in... in, in, in into deep waters and, and taking Nunez down and finishing her there. Hmm. Well, I disagree with you. I think it's probably going to go to a decision, but I agree with you that yeah. I think Misha Tate's going to win. But then again, I thought Holly Holm was going to pick apart Misha That's Tate. True. So yeah. again, you never know. And then thinking back, I've been getting all my predictions wrong. I thought Verdum was going to destroy Miocic. That was wrong. I thought that Luke Rockhold was going to destroy Bisping. That was wrong. So I guess you never know. And then the fifth yeah, fight on the card is a huge heavyweight fight 
this two or three years ago would have been a gigantic fight. Cain Velasquez against Travis Brown. I've been really high up on Travis Brown since he made uh, his run in the UFC. And it's been sad for me to see him kind of falter lately. I think he's one of the top heavyweights. How do you think he's going to fare against Cain Velasquez? This is interesting. Uh, Travis Brown came into the UFC, um, you know, kind of in a, in a hot streak, and he was wrecking people left and right. I do mm, believe he yeah. has lost some momentum. Um, I think that's that's notable. And he's fighting Cain Velasquez, a guy who rarely fights. Uh, you know, seems he's always injured. Um, so this is an interesting fight. Uh, we're gonna see how Cain comes back from all his injuries. Uh, he has, you know, gone through a lot. So there's a lot of unknown factors in, into this one. Uh, but you know, if I had to put money on it, I would I would probably go for Cain Velasquez. I don't think this will be a, a good night for Travis Brown, uh, considering his you know last performances. Yeah, if I had to put money on it, I would say Cain Velasquez. But I think with kind of the aura of UFC 200 and it being Cain Velasquez's return after an injury, and because the heavyweight division has been pretty wonky lately, I wouldn't be surprised if yeah. Travis Brown landed a knockout blow in the first round. It's possible. I mean, Kane has been knocked out before quickly. We saw that in his uh, first fight with Junior Dos Santos. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it could be could be a, a a quick knockout. And you know, Travis Brown has power. He's a big dude, so it can happen. Uh, but I don't. I just don't see it. I think uh, this is going to be a fight where Kane sticks to his you know crisp boxing, gets in the inside, puts Travis Brown against the cage, and just grinds him out, and maybe get a TKO or a decision win. Mm-hmm. And then we have like a ton, a ton of fights that weekend. We got Thursday, Friday, Saturday cards. What is your other fight that you think is going to be significant that's going to steal the show away from the main card of UFC 200? Uh, are you talking about other cards or just in the prelims? Uh, we can go prelims for UFC 200 if you want. Sure. Um, well, yeah, this is uh, this is tough for me because pretty much every every fight here is going to. Be- be amazing right mm-hmm. um you know singano versus pena could be a very good fight you yeah. know girls usually tend to bring it you know these uh, these are two girls that bring it and her their fights are usually exciting so this and it, it's also closing the fs1 prelim so this could very well uh steal the show um what other fight you know diego sanchez versus joe lauzon i think that's, that's an amazing fight, fight too yes. uh you know and you know sanchez is going to embrace the whole stealing the show and getting a fight of the night, you know, just because it's UFC 200, just because of who he's fighting, another veteran that's very exciting as well. Um, I think that's going to be a very fun fight. Yeah, and for me, I, I like all your picks. I think that Rafael Sunsell against TJ Dillashaw is an amazing fight. I'm surprised that it's not on the main card. You have two of the top bantamweights, a Sunsell coming back after a two-year layoff to fight a guy who was just champion, had his first loss in a long time to Dominic Cruz. I think that's going to be a hell of a fight. Yeah, and this is a rematch, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. Sunsell defeated Dillashaw, so there's that. Um I, I like this fight, but I, I don't feel like it's going to be very exciting. I feel like it's going to be very technical. Uh, I'm okay. not saying it's going to be boring, but I feel like it's going to come to, uh, you, you know, there's going to be a lot of technique involved, a lot of waiting involved. Obviously, Dillashaw wants to get back on the winning column. You know, this is a big fight for him if he wants to start talking uh, title shot. Uh, you know, Sansa is in the same spot, you know, although he's carrying some momentum. Him, you know he's off a, a long layoff and you know if he loses against tj dillashaw all the wins he had before you know that sort of goes out the window and he has to start over to to, to make that title run mm-hmm, that is true well thank you for joining me today for people that want to follow you on twitter on any other social media that you have where can they reach you uh danny segura tv so danny with two n's and segura that's probably tougher uh s-e-g-u-r-a and then and then just tv at the end so yeah, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter. Awesome. I always want to add an E to your name between the U and the R to make it Seguera. <laughs> That's why I pronounce it that way. Anyways, thank you for joining us today. And congratulations on all the things you've been doing lately on the MMA Beat, the stuff you. you're doing on MMAfighting.com. It's all great stuff. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me. All right, our first guest this week fights at UFC 200 against TJ Dillashaw. He is Rafael Asunso. Rafael, thank you for joining the show. My pleasure, buddy. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. So we haven't seen you in a long time. It's been about two years since you beat Brian Caraway. What have you been doing in the off time? I know you had a couple of injuries, right? 
Yeah, um, you know, just getting getting healthy, of course. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and oh, what was that time filled with? Because obviously you're a fighter, and being injured, you're not able to train and stuff. How did you occupy your time? Training has been done. Uh, that that includes, you know, getting better, uh, rehabbing myself, getting better from injuries, and I had some other stuff going on. So, uh, time time was, you know, was filled with, you know. Of all the things going on, I just had my baby, and uh, so it was it was right in time where the injury happened, and um, you know it, it worked worked out okay. And obviously, we want to stay busier, you know, uh, as much as we can. But um, I think you know I feel that I didn't miss too much, other than you know having, other than you know having a possible title shot. I, I think I didn't feel. Too much. Well, two things, you know, that I missed, you know, some some good paychecks and uh, in my title shot, you know. Other than that, uh, the time was filled pretty good. I mean, I had a whole bunch of other things going on. I'm helping my brother with the uh, gym opening, um, you know, uh, this week actually. Uh, like I said, the baby and stuff, and getting better, getting better from injuries, being a better athlete. So that kind of took all my, you know, my whole time. Well, first of all, congratulations on the baby. Uh, that must have been Thank big you. for you. Uh, and second of all, I actually talked to uh, one of your brothers, Freddie, not too long ago, and he talked about mm-hmm. the connection that uh, you, th- you three have together. Oh, what is it like growing up with brothers? Because we've seen successful brothers all throughout MMA. How have they impacted your MMA career? Well, I mean, impacted in a positive way um, as far as, you know, being all three of us, like... My brothers are, are the ones that push me the most, um, you know, in, even in training. So, um, you know, that, that that's great there. And, I mean, we're very fortunate to have three, you know, you know, I'm not bragging, but we, we're fortunate to have, you know, three very talented guys, you know, that can train together every day, like a lot of teams up there, uh, you know. You rely on training partners, and luckily we're three brothers. Um, you know, at a high level, you know, we're, we're not like young guys anymore, but you know, we're, we're, you know, other than the injuries, we took care of our uh, careers and, you know, we're, we're right now we're in our mid thirties and, and, you know, well, early thirties, but, and, but we're still at a high, at a high level. And then that makes, you know, a little bit of a, of a, you know, of a positive there, you know, having, all three of us training every day. I mean, we each got our own, you know, things going on. Like, we each run different errands, you know, every once in a while, of course. But um, it's great, man, having, you know, the, the brothers out there. And, you know, as as we get closer to the fights, we, we tend to, you know, get together, you know, study the fights a lot more. Like, for instance, Freddie, for, for this training game, Freddie's be my... It's been my my uh, number one training partner. I mean, the okay. guy's stud. Uh, you know, he's got great kicks. You know, it's so he he can you know very much mimic you know pretty much all my opponents. So it's great, man. Yeah, I was actually going to ask you if you brought somebody in to mimic TJ Dillashaw's movements because his movement is second to really only one, that being Dominic Cruz. Other than having Freddie as your training partner, what have you been doing to prepare? Have you been watching a lot of tape? What is your plan for TJ? I haven't been doing much different. Uh, I'm just bettering myself. You know, I'm not worried about you know what TJ is moving, what TJ movements like. I'm just been training myself. Mm-hmm. I mean, like I said, I mean I've I've been around long enough to where you know I know what you know a, a body movement is. I mean doing martial arts for 20 years and you know a guy moves and you don't you don't know you know what that movement is like and i mean you're you're not you know you're not you know a high level athlete um i mean you know long story short as far as tj's movement goes i mean it it did it worked out good for him i mean the guy kind of moves around you know it's not like i not like i haven't seen before um and it's not like you know my own brother, you know, can probably, you know, do it better. But um, obviously, we, you know, we got to be careful and 
the guys are a good athlete and stuff, but I'm not too worried about any any of the any of the movement. And neither would I be, you know, worried about you know Dominic's foot movement either. Yeah, because those yeah. have been two guys uh, throwing also like Conor McGregor, Stephen Thompson, even that there is this movement movement. So you're saying that the way to kind of take away that is by just fighting your own game plan and not worrying about that, right? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I'm the you know if you look at if you look at uh, you know just just I mean it's just different. I mean I'm a different fighter. I mean you know, I'm you know obviously you know I'm a you know, I'm a little bit shorter. I'm one of the shortest guy in the division. I think it's, it's just, I'm a different fighter. You know, like uh, I'm one of the first guys that started uh, you know doing this, this you know changing stances. You know, back when you know guys are oh he's changing his stance. You know, I don't know what. So the movement, I, I've done it before, you know, not not not, not the uh, the shuffle. I mean, the, the, the shuffling. That's you know, like like Dominic Cruz type of movement, but but changing the stances and kind of using, you know, the the, the both stances and stuff and kind of having different angles. I mean, I've been using that style for you know, pretty while ago. So it's not nothing that's gonna. Uh, so to put it in perspective, you know, if you know, if a guy that you know doesn't, you know, what the what, what you know doesn't change his stances, you know, once you fight somebody that does change, you know, a lot of the stances, then it's probably surprising. So um, that movement is not gonna surprise me too much. I mean, what what you know, I play, I you know, I strike both angles, and you know, I I fight. Uh, up and down. So, what 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 would it surprise me about? You know, the movement, the shuffling. You know, I mean, it won't. You won't. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, it's, it it won't surprise me too much. I mean, it's not something I haven't seen. But yeah. Okay. And uh, after all of this time training, because you even said it that you're in your 30s now, you've had a long fight career. I believe since 2004, you've been fighting professionally. Uh, you've had to move everything. Now, after all of this time, you're only one fight away from a title shot. How does that feel for you? Do you look back at all of the stuff and realize how much pressure is on this one fight? I mean, a little bit, you know, and, 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 and the pressure is good. The pressure is good. Uh, it's going to, uh, you know, it's going to bring the best out of me. I think, uh, I think this fight, I think this fight is bringing the best out of me in um, every circumstance. You know, it's it's hard to describe. It's just I think I just think it's gonna bring the best out of me. You know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in all angles of, uh, of the. But it is a lot. Of, you know, it is a, you know a lot of pressure. Of course, you know I've been I've been I've been out for so long. I gotta kind of reprove myself again, and, and that's fine. I mean, well, actually, I don't have to prove myself. Uh, because you know it's 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 not like oh I wanna you know that I mean I've been I've been around for a long time. Uh, it's just, it's just like, I I see it as a new motivation. Uh, I just see it as a, as a new motivation, like it's a, you know like a new thing. But that, you know unfortunately you know I have missed a lot of opportunities, and and that's something I can't go back in time. But um, I feel good about it now, you yeah. know so. Uh, yeah, Dom I mean, Dominic Cruz has always said and wants to repeat over and over again that there is no such thing as ring rust. Is that even entered your mind the whole ring rust thing? The fact that you haven't fought. I don't in a while? know. I mean, it's. Uh, I don't feel like I'm rusted, uh, mm -hmm. but I mean, if, I, I'm not going to use his words. I mean, it's. Uh, but I, I don't feel like I'm rusted. Uh, you know, like I, I don't feel like I'm missing. You know, anything. Um, you know, I've uh, I've went out of town. Uh, did some training with like some different guys. I didn't just stay home, you know. I kind of travel around a little bit, do some different training to like test myself. I feel great, man. Um, you know, and so um, right now, just put it in perspective. Now inside the octagon, uh, that's all I'm thinking about is put it in perspective. I mean, I'm really motivated for this fight, and and and, and like, I'm old, I'm same old guy. It's uh, you know, it's not gonna change. Um, that. The, you know, the one fight away from a title shot definitely motivates me, you know, a lot more. But uh, for me, it's the same thing. I want to, you know, I got to get up there, do my job. And speaking and, uh, of that one fight away from a title shot, 
what happens if you do get the win? And we've seen this happen in other divisions where guys get talking, they crap talk each other, and then all of a sudden a guy who's ranked number seven, number eight, finds himself with a title shot. TJ's been talking a lot about Dominic Cruz, Uriah Faber, and now even Cody Garbrandt has put his name in to the shuffle. What, what are you thinking about that whole situation? Are you worried that you're going to be overlooked because you're not a part of that kind of trash talk? I'm not worried about it. Mm. I'm, not, I'm not worried about it. Um, you know, one thing I overheard, you know, Dominic Cruz saying that uh, there's not a lot of big fights out there at Benton Way because, you know, the Benton Way don't promote ourselves too much. And I'll tell you what, you know, I mean, when it's time to promote, uh, we're going to promote, you know. It's, it's, I've said it before. Uh, when, when it's time to 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 promote a fight, you know I'm not gonna slack off. You know what I'm saying? I'm just not gonna be talking shit like uh, you know all of you know out of out of the blue. Just you know, oh I'm gonna kill this guy. I'm gonna knock this. Guy. I mean it's it's okay. Some guys like it. That's cool. The fans like it. That's fine. I mean when it's time to promote, it's time to promote. And uh, I think Dominic Cruz still has a lot uh, of work to do at bantamweight. I'm not worried about, you know, the other, the other guys out there, you know, because, you know, um, they may, you know, the, the Cody's and, and the, I'm not really too worried, you know, about that. I mean, they're great fighters, you know. It's just, uh, you know, right now I think I'm in a, I'm in a different league right now. Um, my title shot's way overdue. I mean, just look at the look at the facts, you know. I mean, you know, people. The fans are not dumb, you know. They they try to act like they are oh, you know, this guy is a great guy, you know. But they're not dumb. They know what uh, they know what's going on. And the last time you fought T.J. Dillashaw, it was a split decision, a very close decision. Some people thought T.J. Dillashaw should have won. What are you going to do this time to make sure that the fight doesn't go to a decision or a split decision? I mean, I'm just changing a little, little, little adjustment. Um, you know, I looked at the fight a couple of times, obviously. Uh, I think little, little adjustments, um, you know, like, like I need to do in the fight, it's going to, you know, make a difference this time a little bit better. Uh, you know, so uh, it's not as close as it was. I mean, there's, you know, there's advantages here and there. You know, we can talk all day about what happened. You know, we even went back and forth about the results. You know, we went, we went at it, I think, once or twice, you know, on Twitter or something regarding the result. Mm -hmm. I know what the fight was, you know. There, there's, no, there's no changing the fact by the way he speaks or by the way he reacts or by the way the fans it's it's there you know the facts are there and i know what the fight was i know what i need to bring to the table for a better fight and to so uh, that's what we're doing uh, on july 9th and on july 9th you got to kind of put your stamp on that fight i'm gonna let you go now thank you for the time and good uh, luck in your fight at ufc thank 200. you very much goes down july 9th rafael sanso thanks for the time thanks buddy talk to you soon Joining me on today's show is the former Titan FC welterweight champion and the new UFC fighter, Bilal Muhammad. Bilal, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. No problem. So I was super pumped when I heard the news. Uh, we'll go back to the last time when you and I talked. You were right about to fight Steve Carl, who's a big-name fighter, really tough guy, and you were able to finish him for the championship. What was that fight like for you? Um, it was a big fight for me, man. It was a big test, and uh, I felt like uh, I was able to fight up to the level of my competition and uh, show the world what I'm capable of. Um, a lot of people were doubting me in that fight. A lot of people were didn't believe I could uh, do anything to Steve Carl, and I went in there and finished him, and I showed uh, everybody what I'm capable of, and uh, I plan to keep on doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And you impressed me because I thought Steve Carl and you were going to have like a really evenly matched fight, but you put it right to him and I think impressed the UFC enough to get this chance. Do you think that's why you're in the UFC now? Yeah, Steve Carl was a big name. Uh, uh, he was coming from a World Series fighting championship and uh, he was like ranked in the world. So 
Mm-hmm. I know that a win over him, a big uh, veteran like him, or to get me to the UFC, especially with a finish, I figured that would definitely give me a call. Mm-hmm. And then how did that whole process work out? Did Dana White like, phone your management, or how did this whole thing exactly come about? Yeah, they contacted my management to sign me, and then uh, they offered me the fight against Rick Story when Tarek Daphne was uh, hurt. Oh, wow. And uh, it was... Yeah, it was like a week notice, and I was like, yeah, I'm done, because I'm always training no matter what. So I stayed in the gym, and I said, yeah, I'll take that fight. I knew Rick Story was coming off a long layoff, so and he's a ranked guy, and I want to get into the UFC and get my name right up there in the top rankings right away. I don't want to sit there and have to work my way up, so I know that a win over him would be huge. So I was uh, trying to take that fight, but Stephanie ended up coming back, and he kind of ended up uh, taking that fight anyway. So wow. then I just waited, and they caught me again. Wow, I'm surprised that would have been a huge fight. But again, Aljo Ban still really, really good guy, tough guy. You're kind of not shying away from what it sounds. You're ready to fight the top competition in the welterweight division. Yeah, and like I said, I'm not. I feel like uh, at my, at building myself up. I didn't want to fight any cans. I didn't want to just build up my record fighting scrubs. And I wanted to fight the best in the world. So I was fighting all the top prospects out there. Titan would give me all the best guys. Because when I get to the UFC, I don't want to sit there and not be able to compete. I don't want to be the guy that said, oh, I made it to the UFC. That was my goal. My goal is not to make it to the UFC. My goal is to be the champion. So then when I got there, when I get there now, I want to be able to compete with the top guys right away. So I feel like I'm, I'm able to be in the ring and the cage and fight with any of these guys. And I'll be able to stand toe-to-toe with any of them. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people who don't watch Titan FC, they might not have seen you fight before, and they might not know your story. So for those who don't know and haven't remembered your name yet, can you give them a little introduction to yourself? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been fighting for about five years, uh, 9-0 pro, undefeated, uh, just fighting the competition out there, and any one of my fights, I'm bringing to action. I'm always moving forward, bringing the pressure, and I'm breaking down my opponents. Mm-hmm. And you were born and raised in Chicago? Yeah, born and raised in Chicago, Illinois, Southside. Nice. So, what were what was it like being born and raised in Chicago? Uh, same thing, man. Chicago is a tough place to be, man. Uh, yeah. You're there, always, yeah, you're always gonna, you have to be tough. It makes you tough right away. So, whether you're just like walking at the park, you're going anywhere, you always have to be ready, stay ready, because you never know whenever you're gonna fight. It's not like, it's not one of those friendly towns, man. It's, you always gotta be on your toes. You always gotta be ready to make a move no matter what. So then I said top of the street fighting and might as well start getting paid for it Mm -hmm. and yeah you hear a lot of people when they talk about coming from a certain rougher city that that kind of trains your mentality do you think growing up in Chicago did that for you yeah I think it uh, helped me a lot because I feel like in the cage mentality is the biggest thing man I think it's a fight game is about 90% mental game and then 10% just like physical strength stuff like that man because I've seen guys that have all the talent in the world but when it gets to fight night, they break down, they get choked, and they uh, they get nervous, and then they're, they're not the same type of person they are as they are in the gym. I feel that I'm strong mentally where I'm be able to perform at a big stage no matter what. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we see that with a lot of fighters, especially those making their UFC debut. So you're not worried about UFC jitters then, right? No, I'm not worried about the jitters. Uh, I'm ready for them. I'm ready to embrace them. Uh I've been waiting for this my whole life. I've been waiting to put on a show and show people what I'm uh, capable of. And uh, people are going to remember my name after this fight. Yeah, and if you had to give your uh, prediction, you're against Alan Joe Band, a very, very tough guy. How do you think this fight's going to go? Yeah, he's a tough guy, but I think I'm going to bring the action. Uh, it's going to be a really action-packed fight. And um, I think that we're actually going to steal the show from uh, any all the shows that are out that weekend. Man. It's the biggest uh, fight week of the year. And you got UFC 200, and then you got the the tough finale and I think that that Sunday they're going to be talking about the Alan Joe Bamp a lot of fight I think it should be one of those types of fights where people are going to remember it nice well I'm really pumped for this fight congratulations again for getting into the UFC and good luck in your fight thank you man I appreciate it All right, guys, that's the end of the show. Thank you for tuning in. If you made it to this point, thank you. We haven't had as great a viewership as I thought we would have. The last time we ran the show was with Stephen Thompson and Elias Theodoro, and we only got like three, 400 viewers, so that's unfortunate. If you guys can please share the show around, that would be awesome. Post on your Facebook, uh, share the YouTube link. That would be awesome because... 
So far we haven't been getting the traction that I really wanted to get. I worked really hard putting this all together now, adding all of the effects in. So I really hope that we can build this show into something more. Anyways, if you want to follow me on Twitter, check me out at the Mikey Hutch. Follow me there. Uh, I have a couple of things coming out. I'm uh, gonna publish each interview uh, on them on their own, and then probably do articles for those interviews. The most exciting part of the weekend, though, I will be live tweeting. UFC 200 from the bloody elbow account so make sure to check that out that's going to be really fun to do I've done live tweeting a couple of events but this is a big event so this is going to be really different also on Thursday I'll be live tweeting the Nate Diaz Conor McGregor press conference so that should be a lot of fun anyways we are done for this week thank you for watching the show really appreciate it and until next time see you guys